This is part three of five for our lectures on free will. Uh, now we'll deal with uh, Roderick Chisholm's libertarianism. So the interesting thing about Chisholm is that he thinks that free will is inconsistent with both determinism and indeterminism. And you might think that um, those those two terms exhaust the categories, determinism and indeterminism, so that there's no room for free will if determinism is true or if indeterminism is true. But they actually don't exhaust the categories um, given the way he defines the two terms. So before we get into that, though, you should note that freedom and responsibility for Chisholm require that a person have certain powers over his actions. So if someone puts a microchip in your brain or hypnotizes you and then say they put a microchip in your brain and then they uh, put in a command for you to bark like a dog and then you bark like a dog, he thinks that in barking like a dog you don't have the power over your actions that is required for freedom and responsibility. So, so um, there's some sense of exercising your power to choose that's lacking in those cases. So this is vague, but he thinks you need some sort of power over your actions um, that you're lacking in hypnosis and microchip case uh, in those cases in order to have freedom and in order to be responsible for your actions. And what it's going to come down to is that you need to be um, the originator of your action. And you need to be able to choose among competing options, namely um, to be able to do otherwise than what you actually did. So first, we want to establish that determinism is inconsistent with freedom and responsibility. Suppose that one man hits another man. If the man was responsible for what he did, says Chisholm, then I would urge what was to happen at the time of the hitting was something that was entirely up to the man himself. There was a moment at which it was true, both that he could have hit the man and also that he could have refrained from hitting him. So, you know, you got a situation where one man hits another. And um, if you pause the tape, so to speak, at the point um, just before the man makes his decision to hit the other man, so Smith let's suppose, hit jo hits Jones. You pause the tape just before Smith decides to hit Jones. What Chisholm wants to say is that in order for the person to be free in hitting Jones, there must be he must be able at that point to still decide to refrain from hitting Jones. So although he did hit Jones, the point before which he actually made the choice to hit Jones he was free to make the choice to not hit Jones. Um, otherwise, he's not free. Like, like if he didn't have that choice, the power over his actions to refrain from hitting Jones, like the, it was inevitable that he would hit Jones, then he's not free and therefore not responsible. So in general, if a man is responsible for a certain event or a certain state of affairs, then that event or state of affairs was brought about by some act of his, and the act was something that was in his power, either to perform it or to not perform it, right? So this is really crucial to freedom and responsibility that you have the power to perform something if you choose or to refrain from performing it if you choose, rather than just one course of action uh, available to you. And uh, determinism is inconsistent with that sort of freedom. So if a person has the power to perform an action or to refrain from performing it, then the act cannot be caused or determined by factors outside of that person's control. Because if, if the action is caused by factors outside of that person's control, then the person does not have the power to commit the action or to refrain from committing it. Right? So the hypnosis and the computer chip cases are perfect examples of an action that's not within the person's control um, because if you're hypnotized to bark or if the computer commands you to bark, then you must bark. There's no way around it. You have to perform the action. Or if the 
the hypnotist tells you to not bark or the computer chip, the command is for you to not bark, refrain from barking, then you have to refrain. Or even if your beliefs and desires determine that you'll commit a certain action, I believe that I'm thirsty and I desire to get a drink, then if those determine that you would go get a drink, he thinks you're not free. You have to be able, in spite of your belief that you're thirsty and your desire to go get a drink, you have to be able to both go get a drink or decide, you know what, I'm not going to get a drink, uh, much as people do when they're fasting. Right? So thus, um, Chisholm thinks that determinism is incompatible with being free in your actions and responsible for your actions. Because freedom requires the ability to perform or to refrain from performing, whereas determinism takes that ability away from you. But he doesn't stop there. He says that indeterminism is inconsistent with responsibility and freedom. Now, we have to be careful to define indeterminism according to the way Chisholm defines it. And this is the claim that some event or act is not caused at all. Right. So suppose that I'm you know, standing by Sally and my arm, I didn't decide that it would do this. It just kind of jerked up and like smacked Sally in the face. Right. Suppose that some neuroscientist has me hooked up to his machines and he says, strangely enough, there was no sort of neural event that caused your arm to do that. It appears that your arm just did that randomly or out of the blue. If that's true, then like if that's what indeterminism is, that something happens randomly or out of the blue, then it's not within my power, right? So I couldn't have helped that my arm just like kind of jerked up and smacked Sally. And if freedom requires I have power over my actions to hit Sally or to refrain from hitting Sally, then, um, then I wasn't free in it because it just happened. So, indeterminism is inconsistent with freedom. Indeterminism actually takes away your power, um, and this power is required for freedom. So thus, free will and responsibility are inconsistent with both determinism and indeterminism. So if that's true, where does freedom come from? Chisholm defends free will and responsibility. How so? He thinks that we have free will, we are responsible. So, instead of saying that an act was caused by another event, that's determinism, or not caused at all, that's indeterminism, we must say that an event was caused by the person, the agent. So how are we free? We're free when the event was caused by us, rather than factors outside of our control, or rather than randomly or without cause. So on Chisholm's view, view when an act is freely committed, the agent is like the first, the first cause, the originator of the action, much like God is the first cause of the universe. So God just freely decided to create. It, it wasn't like God burped and out came a universe or sneezed. No, God made an intentional choice. And it wasn't like someone was holding a gun to God's head and said, you must create. No, God made a choice. Um, without any external sort of constraint or um, uh, determining factor. Um, and in the same way, if we're to act freely, you know, um, it can't be just something that just happens to us outside of our control. So like our arm like randomly flips, flips up and smacks someone. And it can't be that it happens because of external factors that sort of cause us to do it. It has to be from within and it has to be, it has to originate with us. So that's where he thinks free will comes from. And this view is called agent causation. That is Roderick Chisholm's libertarian view of free will.